We are on a thousand kilometer real life challenge with the Ionic 28 kilowatt hours. We've done the first five hours of the journey from Calais to the Alps. And in those five hours, we've already done five stops for Ionity and one total energy. The reason for that is there's quite a bit of headwind today and we decided to do short stops, short stints, but stay within the 10 to 80% of capacity of the battery to try to keep it running at a decent pace. The net of that is that we are on a 76 kilometers an hour average, which is nothing to write home about. But let's put it in context. We've never been the warriors of the motorway driving at 130 kilometers an hour or more. In the past, even with a diesel car, we've been really hard pressed to do 110 kilometers an hour. That's our best performance. But the reality is typically more like a 95 kilometers an hour. And if we are gonna do a proper stop for lunch, it can go as low as 65 kilometers. So that 75 kilometers an hour is again, nothing to write home about, but it's not disastrous compared to our normal pace. Let's go. We've arrived in uh, Langres and uh, it's another Ionity, but this is exactly the type of scenario you don't want and um, that all the uh, diesel lovers uh, will uh, like to report on. So yes, it's the holiday and there's a bunch of Skoda Enyaqs and Audi Q4s and e-trons all waiting to get access to the Ionity chargers. Um, so this is not looking good. This is looking like a, a long wait here. Of course, this shows the limitations of this car because we are at 15%. So there's no real option than wait. It's 12.41. Let's see how long it's gonna take. Right, we are back on the road now. It's been, well, a bit painful, let's uh, call it as it is. So we waited 40 minutes before we could get a spot. Now, technically we could have had the 50 kilowatt charger, but we didn't take it, someone else did. Anyway, long story short, we were in the queue, we waited 40 minutes and then we charged for about half an hour. So, well, clearly we've taken a hit on the schedule, if schedule there was, but we're back on 92% of battery and we're headed for the next Ionity. So there's still a bit of an issue with the infrastructure here because it's quite clear that there's not enough in the neighborhood, in the area. Um, and therefore, uh, it's a super busy station. There is no question. In fact, there was quite a bit of a queue on the petrol as well. Um, not sure as they waited for uh, the best part of 45 minutes, but it was quite busy as well. So there we go, 
uh, it's the proper holiday. It feels like it, you know, you get slightly anxious people who are gonna cut the queue, uh, but mostly it's uh, reasonably disciplined, if not at all organized by Ionity. Uh, this, is, uh, this is very disappointing because by now they should have put in place some kind of app-based queuing system so you can park the car and get on uh, surely there must be options and there was none at all here uh, just uh, people organizing themselves and uh, frankly uh, taking space from everyone else so it's 2 p.m which means that we are at the eight hour mark and we've done 510 kilometers now we are fully charged so that means uh, it's gonna get better 510 kilometers divide eight hours we are sub 65 kilometers an hour now so that's clearly not good uh, we've taken quite a bit of a hit just now again it's gonna be a slightly better because we have more battery than when we started this morning clearly the weather has changed quite a bit it's 30 degrees at sign now and uh, we are cruising we're about to get there in five minutes and five kilometers on this air du jura we checked to see if there were uh, a few available connectors and the answer is yes We've got this leg and two more legs to go but the weather has changed completely we started it was 14 degrees celsius it was raining quite heavily and now it's 32 degrees celsius outside therefore we've got the air conditioning on and blowing some good fresh air which is quite nice but you can see that we are on 4.4 miles per kilowatt hours. So you've got two effects, of course. One, the temperature is higher, meaning typically you consume a bit less, but at the same time, of course, you consume that bit more because of the air conditioning. Now, the reality, the reason why it looks so good here at 4.3, 4.4 miles per kilowatt hours is because it is actually a slightly descending slope uh, we were on a bit of a plateau in the Jura and now this is going down towards Lyon. So the reality is elevation matters an awful lot. Air conditioning, well, not so much. We've got the heat pump and we can take a look at the energy consumption, but you can see you're talking about something like 0 0.5, 0 0.6 kilowatt. That's not very much at all. So we're on a Sunday afternoon near Lyon and there's probably 20 connectors over here, none of them being in use. I mean, this compares to a super busy INET station that we are coming from and also the previous one where we had to wait a long time before finding connectors. I mean, okay, this is not great returns potentially for uh, the investors um, but looks to me like we're not getting an Ionity subscription next year this is amazing So it's time at about 11 hours to uh, do a bit of a check point on where we are. We are still charging. I was just praising the merits of the uh, NG charger, but actually uh, after six minutes it stopped 
which is not fantastic, but eh ho. Um, so anyway, we're, we're charging again and we've done 11 hours and we have now done 474 miles. So that's 763 kilometers in 11 hours or about 69 kilometers an hour. We were hoping to be in the mid 70s. So yeah, we're clearly a bit short of all of that. Uh, but 5 p.m. hoping to get there by about 8 p.m. This is our last one, one stop. One of the questions was whether there are enough facilities where the charging stops are. And the answer is yes. Uh, if you're charging by the motorway, typically you've got a good option for toilets and food. Now, there was one exception today, and that was because it's an Ionity which is coupled with a hotel slash restaurant that uh, seems to be closed on Saturday. In fact, it's just a restaurant and that would be the reason why. So there you go. Uh, yes, typically you've got the facilities. That's it, it's 6 p.m. We left at 6 a.m. this morning. We've therefore been in the car for 12 hours. It's time to take a look at where we are. 512 or 513 miles, which equates to 823 kilometers. So we've done 823 kilometers in 12 hours, which is not amazing. That's 68.6 .6 kilometers an hour. Now we could talk about deductions maybe uh, so we had a slow portion for maybe five minutes at most we played around with the phones to record data which has nothing to do with the car 10 minutes and then we got stuck in a queue for a charger for 40 minutes now i do think that is part of the journey but if you want to know what is the capability of the car and its passengers that takes you to 11 hours and five minutes, which is 74 kilometers an hour, which is very close, very close indeed to uh, what uh, we've computed and what we were expecting. 75 is what we were aiming for. So you can see it's quite easy to get distracted and lose a bit of time if you get, you know, your classic vacation queue. Uh, I mean, it could have been a motorway jam, right? It wasn't today but uh, that's the reality. So 69 and 74, I think these are two numbers. Is it good? Is it bad? Well, you'd be the judge of that. So this is the final stop, uh, nine stop today. We've done 895 kilometers in the day after 12 hours and 40 minutes. We arrived with 19% about eight minutes ago. And we are now charging for the last time today. We've therefore done an average of 70 kilometers an hour, which is 
again shy of what we were hoping for uh, but there's been a couple of reasons for that some that are part of the journey and show some limitations still not so much of the car but this shows the limitations of traveling when uh, at the peak of the season at least one station was actually very busy um, but for the rest actually it was very good so there we have it final charge we're gonna go back now into the mountain well in fact we're gonna go into the mountain and ascend to about 1400 1500 meters so not the highest but still a good four kilowatt hours will be spent compensating the gravitational energy uh, for a car of 1.5 tons That's it, we have arrived. Now, if you want more data analysis and the full debrief, click that like button, put the comments down below, and I'll do a part three. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.